So what we will be, we will be doing today uh, is that we will complete the discussion about the liquid crystalline materials. So first I will just remind you about what we learned about liquid crystalline materials in the last lecture. And then we will specifically talk about how we describe the liquid crystalline structure in more, more details. More specifically, what are the most appropriate descriptors when we talk about the liquid crystalline materials. And I will also briefly talk about applications of liquid crystalline materials because they have a range of technological applications. So it's really important to mention at least some of them. So with this, we will complete the discussion about liquid crystalline materials and we will start a discussion about defects in materials if we have enough time. If not, then on Friday we will uh, specifically talk about point defects. So let me just remind you about what we learned last time. Um, so uh, in the, you know, throughout the semester, we learn about amorphous materials, we learn about crystalline materials, and we learn about what is the difference between them. So in the crystalline materials, we mentioned that there is a long range translational and the order symmetry or the orientational symmetry of the individual molecules within the crystals, and they both disappear in liquid crystalline materials. And there are two classes of the materials that somehow live in between these two worlds. So the first one are plastic crystals. They do have the long range translational order, which means that we can predict the position of the molecules within the crystal, but we cannot necessarily predict the orientation of the, of the molecules. And again, that the crystalline structure or the structure of these materials is driven by the fact that these molecules are usually spherical, so they can rotate around their axis. And then we mentioned that plastic crystals, although they do exist, they're not necessarily technologically important. But on the other hand, liquid crystalline materials that do have the long range orientational order, but they lack the translational order, are technologically important. So what is really important about these types of materials is that uh, the molecules are usually highly anisotropic, meaning that their shape is highly anisotropic. And what that means is that we specifically mentioned that they can be either calamitic or discotic, depending on the shape of the molecule. So the, uh, the uh, calamitic molecules were simply rod-like, very lo long molecules and the discotic ones were disc-like types of molecules. So what is really common about all of the materials that can form liquid crystalline materials is that the molecules are highly anisotropic. So uh, we also introduced a certain concept which we defined as a director, which told us about what is the orientational order of these molecules in liquid crystalline materials. So if you remember, the nonpolar vector that we define as PI simply tells you what is the orientation of an individual molecule in the liquid crystal. So if you look at long range and uh, average over time, all of these molecules will be aligned in the preferential direction. And that preferential direction for a given liquid crystalline material is then defined as a director. So the director would be a nonpolar vector that simply tells you what is the average orientation of the molecules in the liquid crystalline material. So we will talk about this in more detail. So we will use this concept of a director to, de to develop even more detailed descriptors of the liquid crystalline materials, which will tell us how you distinguish between one type of a liquid crystalline material versus the other. We will see that there are different flavors of these materials, although they, for example, this particular case is called nematic liquid crystalline material. It means that molecules completely have random orientation, uh, uh, random position, but they have the, the common orientation. So how do you distinguish this from a more ordered form of this? So we will see that liquid crystalline materials can have even higher order. So, uh, so the uh, understanding of what's the meaning of this director is important. And just to again specify that each individual molecule is characterized by, by its own uh, uh, nonpolar vector and the angle between this nonpolar vector and the director uh, will be specific for each molecule. So we will use this as we go along. So this is so-called nematic type of a liquid crystalline material, which is really uh, something in between crystals and liquids in the sense that there is no positional order whatsoever. There are different levels of the ordering in the liquid crystalline materials, and there are certain forms of liquid crystalline materials that can, co uh, that can form so-called chiral or something called twisted liquid crystalline materials. So what is really uh, characteristic of this is that the molecules themselves have some kind of an intrinsic chirality. So if you look at the molecule that is, for example, shown here, it is highly anisotropic, but by itself has certain chirality. So if you take uh, a number of these molecules and put them in the same uh, material, then 
each level or each layer in this material will be driven by the chirality of the layer underneath. And what will this be uh, resulting in is this type of a chiral structure. So it might remind you, of, for example, of the screws, this, uh, screw um, types of uh, symmetries that we learn about in the crystalline materials. What that means is the direction is simply twisting as you go along. And in this particular case, the director itself is not a fixed uh, vector. Right? So if you, for example, look at the director in one layer, the director itself will be very different than the, in the, uh, uh, compared to the director in the next layer. So just to explain this, so for example, if this is the position, so if I'm simply plotting the, uh, the director itself as a function of the position along uh, this uh, uh, twisted uh, liquid crystal, and if I define, for example, x is x, y, and z in this particular case, then the, uh, the director itself will have two co uh, different components and they will behave in a different way. So, for example, if I plot uh, the nx component of the director, which means it's the component uh, of the director in the x direction, what would be, how would it change if I go along this direction of the crystal? Yes? Yes, so it would have the maximum here, and then it would have the maximum here, but then it would go to zero, and it would go like this. So what that simply means is that the director itself, in this first layer, is simply aligned along the x direction, and then it's uh, twisting uh, along the y direction, and then it's ending up again in this direction. And again, note that the, the, the values of this are always positive, because there is no orientation, there is only direction of this, right? So um, or you can also then look at how the ny component of this changes. And again, it is zero at this position. And then it goes to maximum here. And then it reaches zero. So this would be ny and this would be nx. Okay. So again, this is just to mention, again, once more emphasize that this director is not necessarily a fixed uh, non-polar vector in space. It can change in different domains of the liquid crystalline material, but it can also change in the case of the chiral or twisted liquid crystalline materials. Um, as I mentioned, the, uh, the liquid crystalline materials can be more ordered from a simply pure pneumatic phase. And uh, the, the more ordered phase is called a smectic liquid crystal. And what that means is that the liquid crystal itself is uh, arranged in different layers. So if you look at an individual layer, the molecules themselves do not have any type of a correlation. So they are highly aligned, but there is no translational order. However, they are layered. So what that means is that one layer is formed and then there will be another one on the top of it, etc. And again, in each individual layer, the director itself would have a certain direction. And if this director is perpendicular to the stacking order, this is called smack decay. But if the direction or the orientation of the director forms a certain angle compared to the stacking angle, this would be called the smectic C crystal. And again, just to mention that different types of crystal, uh, liquid crystalline materials can exist only in the pneumatic phase, or sometimes get, they can exist in the smectic phase as well. Right? So if I ask you a question, if you have, let's say, a liquid material at relatively high temperatures, and you cool it down, what would be the next phase of that particular material if you assume that it can assume both the pneumatic and the smectic phase? So you start from a liquid, you cool it down, what's the next thing? <coughs> yes? It would be pneumatic, yes. Why? Why would it be pneumatic? That's right. So pneumatic phase is less ordered than the smectic phase. So if that particular material can exist both in the pneumatic and the smectic phase, not all of the liquid crystalline materials will exist, then the next, the next phase would be pneumatic. And again, if you cool it down, it would be smectic. So what can happen if I cool it down even further? Yes? It forms an actual crystal? It can form a crystal. 
Again, not all of the materials that exist in the liquid crystalline form can form crystals, but for many of them, they can crystallize. So the end result would be crystal. Okay, um, so there are many examples of the smectic liquid crystalline materials that are simply smectic, or they form this smectic phase or layered structure simply because they are polar. So this would be just one example of the polar molecule. And again, the polarity of that molecules when it is in, for example, a solution or in, uh, in the liquid, it will form this smectic structure. So again, these molecules do not necessarily have to be highly anisotropic, like we define liquid crystalline materials to be in general. Their smectic phase simply comes from the fact that they are highly polar. Okay, so for example, many of the surfactants uh, are smectic uh, liquid crystalline materials due to their polarity nature. Okay, so, so far we mostly talked about uh, calamitic crystalline materials, liquid crystalline materials, which means that their molecules have rod-like structures. We did mention that the discotic uh, liquid crystalline uh, materials exist, and what is really common among them is that their molecules have disc-like structure. And again, in this class of materials, they can be discotic pneumatic. What again that means is that these disc-like molecules will have high orientational order, but there will be no positional order, but they can be also stacked on the top of each other, and then this is called columnar. <coughs> okay, again, discotic columnar. This is just to tell you, again, different flavors, and uh, etc. So just to summarize, in terms of the shape and isotropy of the liquid crystalline materials, we know that there are calamitic, there are discotic, they can be pneumatic, chiral or twisted, or smectic. <coughs> and in the case of the discotic, they can be pneumatic <coughs> and columnar. So calamitic versus discotic simply tells you something about the shape of the molecule, whether pneumatic, twistic, and smectic, or <coughs> columnar, tells you what is the relative arrangement of these molecules in the material itself. So this was a purely classification of the liquid crystalline materials based on their structure. But the liquid crystalline materials can also be, be cla classified according how they are processed. And what that means is that there are so-called thermotropic and lyotropic uh, liquid crystalline materials, depending whether their structure and the arrangement of the molecules depends on the temperature or on the solvent <laughs> or the liquid, respectively. So if you have a thermotropic liquid crystalline material, what that means is that the transition between the liquid crystalline phase and the liquid phase is driven by temperature. So as we just talked about, right, you start from a liquid, you cool it down, you will have either smectic or pneumatic phase, etc. But there are many examples of the liquid crystalline materials, for example, surfactants, where the liquid crystalline phase existence depends on the, on the solvent. So if you have a certain solvent or a different solvent or different concentrations, the material will exist as, a, as a completely as an anisotropic liquid or as a liquid crystalline material. And that's driven by the interaction of these molecules with the surfactants or by, by the solvent uh, molecules. So again, this is from the processing perspective. Um, and again, in all of these cases, whether it's a thermotropic or li uh, lyotropic, again, you can talk about smectic phases, et cetera. Okay?